everybody, it's me, Cheryl. I hope everybody's all right. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here today. I'm stuck inside. Um, but it's not like I haven't been out today. I did go out. I went to the sorting office and I keep saying post office. No, you didn't hear that. I, I, to myself, I was saying post office. I got two cards through the post yesterday. Um, notifications saying two items, one for me, one for Christopher saying they're underpaid so not only did I have to pay the remainder if I wanted them I would also have to pay a handling fee so on Christopher's um, it was an extra 11 pence plus the one pound handling fee and on mine it was 20 pence plus the one pound handling fee that is really irritating now the reason why it was underpaid was because a lot of posting rules have changed in the UK this size envelope, I'll just show you the back of it, is classed as a large letter. This size is it's just a regular size. You could put a normal first or second class stamp on there and you'd be fine. But you put a normal first or second class stamp on here, as, as happened with these. This is Christopher, this is mine. It's going to get stopped from the payment because these are large letters. That's A5. Um, yeah, so in, if anybody's in the UK who's not really fully au fait with the posting rules, don't forget not only have they got the slot test, because they, they check whether it's thin enough to go through certain slots, otherwise they charge you more. It's also the size of the envelopes, so your recipient could be forking out to receive their post and that's not right. So a first class stamp, a regular first class stamp is 62 pence in the UK. And a large letter is 93 pence. So this one, right. okay, so this, so this one, which was sent first class, it, sh it should have gone large letter at 93, but because the handling fee and the remainder, that's more, that's £1.11 I've had to pay to get this. Whereas a 93 pence stamp, it's like, that's annoying. And this one was posted second class, and a second class letter is 53 pence, but the large letter is 73 pence. But these are up to 100 grams, that, that was, one of them was 44 grams and one of them was 46. So they're in the first category of weight, but it had to be large letter. So please be aware of that when you're posting to somebody in the UK. If it's that size, which is A5, it's a large letter. It's going to cost more and it's not very nice to um, push that cost onto your recipient. Um, I finished Mum's shawl. I finished it on Sunday, I think it was. Um, but yesterday was the first chance I had to like wash it and lay it all out so it could dry. And I've taken photos, which I will upload to Shawl Along. Um, Pam's, Pam Chatfield Shawl Along on Google Plus. So here it is. There, move back a bit. It's like the other one. It's opened out. Um, on the bottom, all the stitches have opened out. So maybe that's just. Can you still hear me? <laughs> maybe that's just like the nature of the beast. Um, because I was really worried when my mother-in-law's shawl did that and that was a slightly different yarn, slightly different. It had three materials in there, whereas this is just 100% more. But it's done the same thing here, so I think it's just the nature of how it does. You know, it has the lacy effect on the bottom. So it's beautiful, isn't it? So I shall get that um, sorted out and post it to my mum. Um, and then I went to this... Uh, shop called Poundland. You've probably got them in America like the same, like Dollar Store or something like that. I'm sure it's the same kind of thing. I've got two things actually. An onion bag. And it's got a little zip, a zip compartment to the side as well as the drawstring up top. No onions will ever go in here. It's just for projects. Um, it's because I also bought um, some from eBay. Some, I bought five of these bags. They're only small and so they're good for small projects and I was actually kind of hoping they'd be a bit bigger, you know, like the onion bag size. But never mind, they're, um, they're suitable. Oh, that was just me just messing about. Um, I need to improve on that. I made a heart. It's a nice size. Um, it's not going to be in that colour like. Um, 
I'm not keen on the edging and I'm not keen on this little squiggly bit at the bottom. Um, but maybe I suppose it's okay. I don't know. I just Maybe I just need to practice making it. But it's, it's the right size for what I was thinking. Um, so that was just practice thing. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's good there, isn't it, when you figure what you're going to say. Yeah. The bags, yeah, they, they weren't big enough. Um, for any larger projects I'm a bit stuck and I wanted clear so I could see what was in there and while I was in that pound shop I got this it's horrible yarn but I needed it for the colour can you see how bright it's, it's luminous yellow the sunlight's against there so it's probably through the screen it looks like it's bleached it um, it's horrible to knit it <laughs> but I've made that with it, which I'm going to sew up the side. And you think, Cheryl, why didn't you do it on the Addy? Well, look at this, what I did on the Addy when I first got it. Um, if I fold that in half, I will show you the size difference in width. It's quite a big difference, and I don't need anything this big. See, what I want to use this for is for a seat belt, just a sleeve, because in Christopher's motorbility car, he's two rows behind me and he mostly wears dark clothes and sometimes a coat, which is dark and two rows behind, it's dark and the little monkey, sometimes he slips out of his seatbelt like that I'm um, like, I can just about see him through the rear view mirror I can't always see it, so I don't know if it's always on and if I do catch it, I'm like, get your seatbelt back on and then he, he puts it back on like that so luckily he doesn't undo the buckle, he just slips out of it so he knows what he's doing and he can put himself back, luckily. But sometimes I can't see. It's too dark. So I thought, I just want a sleeve. And I did look for some like seatbelt pads and stuff, but I couldn't see any that I really liked. Um, not that I really liked, I couldn't see any. I have actually found one now. I think it was 5 99 but I don't know what delivery would be on top of that. And I thought, look, I'm in the process of knitting this now. I might as well just finish it off. So I've just finished off this length here. Might be able to see the length better there. There, and I'm just going to sew it up and slide it on when, when we use it. So at least when he, it goes over there, his seatbelt, I can see that it's on there. That's all it's for. So I didn't really care that this yarn was. <laughs> I did try to crochet with it, and it was like, oh, I can't do it. It just, it wasn't right for it. But knitting was better for it. Um, I did tell you to finish the shawl. Yeah. I'm designing a shrug. I've never made a shrug before, but I've got the basic idea if it's a big rectangle, you fold it in half and you seam two areas and it's a sleeve. Well, I thought, there's certain features of the shrug thing that I don't like. Maybe I could change it. But I thought, well, how am I going to find that out? I'm not going to just crochet a big rectangle, then body gets too late. What a waste of time and what a waste of yarn. But we've got a bunch of old towels and one of them is like 46 inches wide. There I am. See where I am on the screen. And 24 inches long wide. Well, 46 by 24. Forget the length, the breadth. And <laughs> um, yeah. And I thought, let's let's just sample that. Let's get some safety pins. Not, not straight pins. I wanted safety pins. I wanted to make sure they stayed there. And I... Uh, I pinned where I was and I tried it and thought, oh, a bit too tight, take safety pins out there. Put it on and thought, yeah, but it's got like bat wing sleeves, don't like that. So I tapered it with more pins. And then I thought, I don't like the way that collar, the collar at the, t at the top, it folds inwards like that. And I thought, that's no good. Don't like the way it does that. What can I do to alter it? Okay, clock that. And the same happens underneath it, it folds inwards on the bottom. And I don't like that either. So I was doing some thinking and I figured out what I could do. And I couldn't I couldn't replicate that on the towel because it because of the dips. But I've got a plan of what I'm gonna do. I thought I'm gonna have to go and make one of them. So all the stage you're at now, I've got the drawing. I've, I've drawn it. I can't draw. <laughs> um I got like all the sizes of the towel and where the, where I wanted certain pins, so where I want to sew certain things and things other things to happen. 
and then all I need to do is find a stitch in my stitch book, um, do a swatch, like find the yarn I want to use, do a swatch so I can find the in, uh, stitches per inch. Now that's the thing, if you do a non-conventional stitch, how do you do the gauge on a non-conventional stitch? Because our gauge is classed, worked on, say for example, oh, so say if your stitch pattern is basically a combination of single crochets, then you do the gauge on the single crochet, is that right? And if it's half double crochet, all essences of that, you do it on the half double crochet, is that right? That's how I'm thinking, so maybe I should do a swatch with half double crochets and that's my swatch. And then I can, that's how many, I can work it out how many um, stitches I need. I can but try. So that, that's the idea, I just haven't picked a stitch yet, but I'm, I've, I've got the drawing. I just need to work out stitches per inch, that kind of thing, and then do it. That should be interesting, shouldn't it? And by the way, I've never made a shrug before. I've never worn a shrug before. <laughs> anyway, and also, I guess what I've started. Look at this book here. I've started the sample socks and I've got to laugh at myself. Because when you do the sample two, a, two, a, two at a time, she recommends that you do different colours. Well, of course, me being me, I think that's stupid because if I'm making a pair of socks, well, I'm not going to want to do two different colours. I want to do the same colour because, like, well, what would you do? Make this, say, if you were making a pair of green and a pair of blue, then you do the green and the blue with each other. I can see why, though. It's for the sample sock. Yes, I can see why. It's just so you can differentiate between one sock and the other. And you don't go into any problems like I did here. <laughs> See that there? It's joined. <laughs> oh dear. Can you see it there just underneath my finger? <laughs> That's why she recommends doing two different colours. That's only the sample sock. But I'm thinking, well, you've got to learn to be able to separate one sock from another. One yarn laid from another yarn lead. Lead, you know, working yarn. Oh, what was I thinking? Never mind. But you know what? I'll frog it. I'll do it again. But there's something that really, like, um, threw me because I wasn't sure. And I thought, well, just go with, rather than doubting yourself, just go with the process. And what it is, it's the increase. And it's a, um, it's a make one right and a make one left. But it's not done how you would think. It's done like... A half hitch on the loom. You know how you do your half width, half hitch on the loom. That that would be uh, the make one right. And to do it left, you do it in reverse. So you have to figure out how to do the opposite of the half hitch to do to get the yarn going the other way. If you know what half hitch is, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's not how you would normally increase. So that's that's kind of different. And I was thinking, oh, it's going to leave it holy, isn't it? Well, that uh, does it. Oh, it doesn't appear to be so. Anyway, I'm, go I'm going to do that again because I can't. Oh, I've joined it. Duh. And then I'm thinking, why don't I just do one sock? Why do I have to be awkward and two, two? And I'm thinking, yeah, but I know me. If I just get used to doing one sock and I think, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Why? I'll do, do the other one now. Oh, I can't be bothered. I lose interest. So it's a case of having to do two of them at the same time. And learning to do two of them at the same time and just getting used to it. Because once they're on the needles, that's it. So I tell myself. What I shall do is say goodbye and have a good rest of the week and a lovely weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.